Hey everyone and welcome to another Easy PC Builder video. My name is Brett and today we're going to talk about the top 10 build errors. So you've just built your new rig and you're about to hit your power button for the first time. What you're expecting to see is something like this. System powers up, the fan starts spinning, display out on your screen should show post and then if you've got an operating system installed it'll start booting into that. But what if your computer doesn't show a display out or you get a series of beeps? Let's explore that a bit further. In order to effectively test for build errors we need to take the computer back to basics. This allows us to troubleshoot in the simplest manner. To do this, we are removing anything from the motherboard that isn't required for the base function of the computer, such as video cards, sound cards, network cards, hard drives, and additional RAM. We are also removing the motherboard from the computer case. You only require a hard drive connected where your computer is successfully showing post and searching for a boot drive. If it is not showing display out or post, we suggest leaving it disconnected. We will connect our power supply to the motherboard outside of the case also. Looking at the back of the motherboard, the conductive underside must be separated from the case by an insulating air gap by using a standoff or riser. Where correctly installed, these ensure that the conductive through-hole components are unable to short to your computer chassis. Always count the number of risers required, as installing too many, such as installing one where it shouldn't be under the board, can touch a through-hole pin and short to your case. Too little and the board may flex and also touch. This picture shows a riser installed in a computer case. The second picture here shows all six as required by this motherboard for the case. You can see here that the motherboard without risers can sit on these through holes and the last picture here shows the separation that these risers provide. If you have installed your motherboard without risers and see something like this, this may be from arcing or ground damage and has likely physically damaged the motherboard. This is not an issue that can damage your computer, but your PC will just not power up, which will be an issue to you. Your power switch will be the first item to check. Where it's not installed fully or in the correct position, your computer will not turn on when you press your power switch. Check to see that you have installed this on the correct pins, lining up with the motherboard legend and not installed to either side or bridging other pins. You can see that it is easy to assign the switch to the wrong position, which will not bridge the pins correctly to start your computer. As the switch itself only bridges the pins on the motherboard, the orientation of install of a switch is not an issue for correct operation. This is a different case for the LED outputs however. If you wish to test if you have a faulty motherboard header switch, you can use a paper clip or small screwdriver to bridge the motherboard header pins to power the computer on. For your LED connections, you need to be mindful of the pin assignment and also the orientation of the connection. Having positive to positive will ensure your LEDs work correctly. Also check that your power supply is plugged in and turned on at both the wall and the power supply. This is a very common cause of my fans are spinning but there is no display error. When the graphics card is in the case, it's quite hard to check that it is seated correctly. Having the motherboard out of the case will verify the card connection and also show the right amount of pressure required to seat the graphics card and RAM. You want a flat connection along the slot that you are installing. Also ensure that your graphics card is installed in the fastest PCI Express slot available. See the numbering for speeds 2, 4 and 16, which is the desired. You can see from this picture that when RAM is installed in the case, it's quite hard to check the alignment of install. Here we show a RAM stick not seated correctly on the right and correct it by seating it and hearing the click when the holding tab is engaged. Also remember to check your RAM speeds to ensure they are compatible with your motherboard. You can check this with your motherboard manual online prior to purchasing. Providing the CPU orientation is correct and the CPU is seated well, you can't necessarily install a CPU incorrectly. 
However, it's not hard to damage the thousand plus pins on the CPU array if you touch them with your fingers or drop the CPU onto them. As shown in our build video, always make sure to hold the CPU from the sides, placing it as shown. This allows you to lower the CPU as much as possible prior to setting it in its final position. This is another common cause of fan spinning but no display error. The motherboard would default to an aftermarket graphics card unless explicitly told not to, so no output is generated from your motherboard connection which you are connected to. Your PC will usually post and self-check correctly, but as you have no display, nothing will show you that the PC is working correctly. This is easy enough to amend by changing your display output connection from your motherboard to your graphics card. Here is a picture of a CPU power connection installed in a case. It's quite hard to see. This is also another cause of the fan spinning but no display error. The motherboard will try to initialize, but the CPU doesn't have the required power, so it won't post correctly or show display output. These connections are usually 8 pin, but some will be 4. This cable is required for any late model Intel CPU. Don't confuse this with your PCI Express or graphics card connection as they have different pin assignments and are keyed differently also. An alternate error where this connector is not installed is that the system will go into a boot loop of around 3 seconds powering on and off continuously. We show this here. Also remember to check your motherboard 24 pin power connector is seated correctly. This is a quick one to fix, providing your power supply has these connections. We believe this is the most common cause of the fan spinning but no display error. It's similar to the CPU power connector issue, but where your primary display is plugged into the, your graphics card and it doesn't have the required power, your PC may still boot but default to your motherboard graphics, but you won't see an output as you're plugged into your disabled aftermarket graphics card. Insert both of the power supply connections as shown to fix this issue. Air is a poor medium for transferring heat. Thermal paste fills the small air gaps between the CPU and heatsink surface, ensuring that heat is efficiently transferred for stable CPU temperatures, providing reliable operation. Some stock coolers may come with thermal paste pre-installed, which is a grey white paste on the bottom of your CPU cooler. However, most aftermarket ones without this require it to be installed as shown. The computer will still turn on, but may be unreliable and power down or crash when in games or other high intensity tasks. This is due to thermal throttling or the system protecting itself by powering down to decrease the CPU heat. Your motherboard won't necessarily warn you or beep if you don't plug your CPU fan in. The result is a similar result to the lack of thermal paste where the computer will still turn on but may be unreliable and power down or crash when in games or other high intensity tasks. This is easy to correct by installing the 3 or 4 pin header to your motherboard and ensuring the fan is operating when the PC is on. As a side note, your graphics card does not require a specific fan connection as this is connected internally on near all graphics cards. An underrated power supply may appear similar to thermal load problems. In times of high thermal load, your computer is also requesting a large amount of power to support the task at hand, and where this is not supplied, it will power off, restart, or be unable to provide power, such as to your graphics card, resulting in unreliable operation. We would suggest nothing less than 500 watts in a gaming PC, the later GPUs request about 150 watts typical and 280 to 300 at peak. So if you want to learn more, jump over to our website at easypcbuilder.com where you can get our 80 page master course and our monthly updated build guides. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>